The International Association for the Study of Pain uh, describes pain as a sensory and emotional experience associated with both actual and potential tissue damage. So uh, what that says is uh, same as the, uh, my uh, story, my running story, said that pain is variable. It's very subjective. Depends on the person, the situation, and the experience. But uh, when we use the pain, it's a little bit complicated because pain means many things. It, sometimes it means injury, sometimes it means effort and exertion. Um, but uh, pain, pain is important information. It, it can tell us about danger. Um, it can signal that we're meeting a challenge. And it, it, in, in some ways, it teaches us, if we listen carefully, what's safe and what's not. So uh, just tolerating pain isn't really the solution. This, the, the goal is to understand what pain means and therefore understanding its meaning, making a decision about what to do about it. Uh, from a biological perspective, we understand that pain is a super system. Uh, it involves the nervous system, which transmits pain, the uh, endocrine system, which kicks off the fight or flight response, and the immune system, which uh, attempts to defend the body from threat from the external environment. Uh, so essentially, uh, pain is a very dynamic experience. It begins as an electrical electrical signal. It starts in the body at the source of the pain and gradually makes its way uh, towards the brain. When it gets to the brain, uh, it's received and processed. And the, the, the goal of the process processing is to uh, ask the question, what's the meaning of the pain? And essentially, what are the actions that I might take? And then from that, uh, an actual choice is made. So to understand the anatomy component a little bit better, uh, it's useful to know that when there is pain, uh, the information proceeds through the spinal cord to the brain on two separate pathways, Ac actually more than two, but, but two main pathways. One is very quick, goes to the, um, to the top of the brain. It signals uh, where the pain is and what it feels like, like a, a burning, stabbing pain in the foot. Uh, there's a slower signal that goes to the midbrain area, which is, is involved in uh, motivation, emotion, and memory. And so um, whenever we experience pain, we're checking it against what our history and prior experience with pain is. Um, so there's the, this ascending system that brings information up. Once information gets to the brain, uh, the information comes then back down to the brain that influences how the system tunes in to what's happening. So there's ascending mechanism, descending mechanisms, which can actually change the threshold and the settings at which pain is received, turning them up or turning them down. And then there's a collateral system that kicks off the fight or flight system. So uh, uh, the whole pain response is, is far more complex and involved than many people uh, want to believe. So that there's a kind of a simplified version that's sometimes called telephone line theory of pain, that uh, the signal just moves through the body uh, to the brain and says there's pain down here, when in fact it's something more like a whole brain experience, very complicated. Now to help explain how complicated that is, I want to look at the uh, uh, brain structure and the neuropsychology of the pain experience. Very complicated. There's two important regions of the brain involved, the cortex, which is more of a decision-making, higher-order thinking uh, uh, type structure, and then the midbrain, which is the motivation, emotion, and memory. And within those, uh, those general structures or substructures that perform different functions. Uh, prefrontal cortex here is the ultimate decision maker. What, what do I do? Um, do I want to turn this pain off? Do I need to tune into the pain? Uh, the, 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 mid, the top of the brain here, somatosensory cortex, tells us what and where. But within those deeper structures of the brain, there's some more interesting things happening in terms of creating an emotional response, uh, creating a survival response, driving motivation, and so forth. So uh, pain comes in, fans out to these brain areas, and then they converge on one another. So very complicated experience, which explains why the pain experience can be so variable and different from 
uh, one person in different situations or different people in the same situation. We know even that as the signal moves from the periphery of the body, arms, legs, trunk, and so forth, into the spinal cord, into the brain, that it's already being subject to influences. So each level of the spinal cord where pain signals converge um, does, works like a microprocessor and does some initial processing of the pain signal. And then the messages kind of queue up to get on the highway to the brain. But the, uh, the highway itself sometimes is wide open and with many lanes and sometimes it closes down. Um, it can close down for a lot of reasons, uh, use of medicines, but also descending messages from the brain can essentially uh, shut the gate, make the highway closed so pain signals uh, do not get to the brain. So this can happen externally from medications, but it can happen uh, internally from innate mechanisms. And, and this is the type of thing we do see sometimes in survival situations where the brain essentially says, the situation's too important, pain drops out. It's this uh, same process, this, uh, it's called a, uh, uh, gate control theory of pain that explains things like heat and cold and acupuncture and massage in terms of some aspects of the pain relief that these interventions provide. Many people are aware of a little bit of the neurochemistry of pain, uh, in particular what are called the endorphins. Uh, endorphins uh, is a term that's uh, short for endogenous morphine, essentially uh, morphine-like compounds that are endogenous or and native to the body produced within the brain, uh, the body's own natural pain-killing mechanisms. So uh, the endorphins are very much involved in pain management, but other systems are as well. Serotonin uh, is, is involved in uh, pain, but it's also involved in mood and sleep. And then the uh, adrenaline, noradrenaline, epinephrine, uh, system is also also plays a critical role in pain, kind of a wild card. It, uh, when harnessed, it can help the person manage the pain and be more effectively, but if, if not, it, it can uh, result in panic and dysfunction. Uh, lastly, it's important to understand that the way pain is experienced and the way pain is expressed is influenced by training and by culture. So the Marine Corps is famous for the slogan, pain is weakness leaving the body. Um, so the context there is uh, the everyday function of, of being a Marine uh, is dealing with pain. It's expected uh, and it's trained. People work and learn to tolerate pain and put it out of their minds so that it's not a distraction. Now, interesting research goes all the way back to World War II with uh, military surgeon, Lieutenant Colonel Henry Beecher. Uh, working in a combat environment, he noticed that individuals wounded in combat with injuries comparable to those that would be seen in a civilian environment required less medication relief. And so people continued to speculate and attempt to understand why this is, but no doubt, although there's probably many factors involved, part of this is the culture and the expectation that pain will be tolerated. So this pain tolerance then becomes essentially a, a function of training. And we see the same uh, pain culture in the sport environment where people talk about no pain, no gain. Uh, in fact, it's not that simple. And in the everyday environment, the training environment, for instance, in law enforcement, it's important to make good choices about when pain can be ignored and when pain should be used as a warning signal uh, to alert the person to stop what they're doing or to do it in a different way. So what we want to do, we want to think about the uh, flip side of the uh, no pain, no gain ideas, sometimes no brain, no pain. If there is no brain, there is no pain. We want people to be intelligent. It's just not about tolerating pain. It's about making good choices. Just one more aspect of decision making in a performance environment. Mm -hmm.